Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. I'm Barry Bryson. We're continuing our study of the Epistle to Philemon. We're looking at it as a um, as a textbook of persuasion, as Paul tries to persuade Philemon to set his runaway slave, now returned Onesimus, free. Uh, since Onesimus is now his brother in Christ, and send him back to Paul in Rome uh, so that he can serve Paul there. And as we've said every day, it's clear Paul doesn't think Philemon's going to want to do this. So we've been looking at the tools. Let me make a correct that Paul uses. Let me make a correction. Uh, I went back and listened to a few days ago, and I completely got backwards, said, said it backwards, um that that was just me becoming tongue tied onesimus means useful um but this slave who ran away uh and who may have um stolen uh from philemon had proved himself useless for a while but now he's useful again um so sorry for making myself tongue tied the other day and saying it backwards We've already looked at Paul using love. Love is the primary motivator in this book. And then virtue. I love you. You love me. You love Jesus. You love the brotherhood. Well, then you got to love Philemon. Virtue. You're not the guy who ever plays the villain in the story. You're good. Everybody knows you're good. We take joy in your own goodness and, and the way you go the extra mile for others. And that's not fake. It's what's inside you. Those were the first two persuaders that Paul has used. And then there's also respect. And and this is this permeates the whole letter. This is Paul saying, I'm going to do right by you. I owe you that because I respect you. It begins in the very first verse. You're a fellow worker. Uh, I consider you a peer, a colleague. And then, you know, th- there is... You know, the respect that he pays in mentioning uh, you know, the, the good things that we've already that we've already talked about. There is the respect that he pays in making the appeal at all. He says, um, and let's look at um, let's look at um, I'm going down to verse um, twelve. I have sent him back to you in person. That is sending my very heart, whom I wish to keep with me that in your behalf he might minister to me in my imprisonment for the gospel. But without your consent, I did not want to do anything, that your goodness should not be as it were by compulsion, but by your own free will. As he said um, up in verses 8 and 9, Therefore, though I have confidence enough in Christ to order you to do what is proper, for love's sake I rather appeal to you, since I am such a person, Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus. He, he says, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm not going to boss you. Uh, this has to be your choice. And, and th- this is him showing respect. This is, he's not in any way setting up a um, um, hierarchy in which, <clears throat> in which he treats uh, Philemon as an underling. Now he has authority, real authority. We're going to talk about authority as one of the motivators, but um, the authority that Paul has is the moral authority, the authority as an apostle, the authority of the word. He's he's not going to be exercising authority in such a way that establishes him as Philemon's superior. He's treating Philemon like an equal, like a colleague, like a brother. This is such an important factor in the book, in the letter, because Philemon has to treat Onesimus like an equal, like a peer, like a brother, even though he's his slave. That's why it's important, not just to motivate and to persuade, but to transform just the way Philemon sees the world. Paul's treating him as an equal because he's a brother and a fellow worker. That means Philemon has to have the same respect for Onesimus because he is a brother. He is a fellow worker. 
And so that's the third tool that we want to look we that we want to look at the tool we talked about today. We've have we've had love, we've had virtue, and now we have respect. We're going to talk about personal history next time. Thank you so much for joining me for another five good minutes with the word.